Okay. So we're going to kind of pick up where we left off. We've already flown that edge. So in this video, we're going to be focused on more about creating a curve, going right to a quad mesh, as well as uh, kind of setting up our parts. Because if we set up everything in the 2D, it'll be very easy to map it up into the 3D. So what I'll do is I'm going to turn my pattern back on and you can see that it's kind of like off. So I've moved my kind of pattern into a different area. So what I'll do is I'll grab everything and I have this kind of, and I know that my edge, if I turn the last off, I know that this corner is that corner. So I'm going to move kind of point to point. So with the on snap, move it up into position. So with that, when I turn my last on, you can see that it's kind of there. So, and I can delete or keep this. It doesn't really matter, but I'll just move it to my last. Okay. So the next kind of features, what I'll do is I'll kind of walk through the different ways to make a part and flow all of those pieces back up. So some of the quickest ways to do um, some of the part creation. So what I can do is uh, I'll use, I'll just stay within the pattern. So I'm gonna turn the center line off. I'll keep those on and I wanna focus on this van with the holes. So what I can do is I can select everything and then there's a couple different commands. There's the B. This, we have two options. So we have the B planar quad mesh and the B tri mesh. So the tri mesh essentially does exactly what it says, creates triangulated meshes. And that's fine. So we can use this pretty much as our base. Um, sometimes triangles are easier to be able to get the entire kind of piece without doing too much work. Um, but we could set it to different uh, edge lengths, we'll go like three. And I'm essentially setting this this number, hitting, hitting the, the piece and then selecting it. So there we go. I have one selected. Um, and then I can just say hide and I'll grab everything at the end. So the next thing I want to do is the uh, some of these weld parts. Let's work on some of these weld parts. So I can grab this, and what I'll need to do is maybe join these. And turn my vamp off. Good. And I'm going to do the same for this one as well. Make sure maybe everything. So when I have something like this, is that uh, what I'll use is the curve boolean to make me myself like a, a new piece as well. So I can do that right now. So I'll say curve boolean, grab my curves, and I'm gonna select in that, and there we go. So the way to kind of quickly make these, I can use I can try the B quad. Oops. Or I can, some other options to make parts, I can use a surface, I can also, and then use the quad mesh as well. So I wanna make sure that this is a closed curve and that's kind of where uh, one of the other pieces. So this one's a closed curve. And as I can see, there's kind of a little piece hanging out. So I'll trim that off. I select it, it's still an open curve. I can say close looks good had to move a point that's totally fine now let's try that one more time so as you can see it's pretty dense uh, but it allots for that hole um, I can change it to maybe three yeah okay but I want to make sure as I come back that I'll want either the pieces to be symmetrical. I can use that curve, uh, the center line to pretty much mirror the pieces over. I'll turn on that center line. And there we go. Or what I can do is then, if it's not exactly the same, what I can do is then just use the same commands. And there we go. And I can do the same with this one. 
Maybe we'll go a little higher. So one, since it's so much smaller. And as you can see, there's not really good edge loop around there. So what I can do is that I can actually take this curve and offset it into its interior. Need to go a little bit smaller. And say, okay, that's fine. I can do some cleanup as well. Again, if you prefer to do more of the polygonal uh, kind of sub D modeling, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna select these. And I'm gonna extrude. And now we can make some changes to it. Perfect. Set weld. And you can see those darker curves indicate that it wasn't welding as I would understand it to be. And once again, I'll do the same series of commands. So I'll first offset this. Select both of these. Create a planar quad mesh. Say OK. Grab both my curves and extrude. Make some changes. This out a bit. And say well. Cool. And the other piece, the other way that I could do it is just saying a planar surface. I could go into quad remesh. Preview, turn it off. Say four. And as you can see, it's starting to do it. And we could do the same kind of idea as well, even before going into it. So I can go into my curve, I can offset it a certain amount of distance, maybe around three. Planar surface. Quad remesh. Make it this kind of as low topology as you need or as high. Okay. I'm going to delete this. And that's okay. This I maybe want to kind of delete, getting some extra stuff in there. So, Control Z. I'll grab these two points because I want to stitch them back together. Perfect. Grab everything. Since it's an edge loop, I can select it once. Extrude the mesh. And go to one or three. I'll say weld. And then I can make some changes to it. So obviously I need this to come down and out and a little bit smaller. You can grab this curve and say slide. Kind of even out this as well as I want to maybe do it more look proportional. And I'll do the same over here. First I'll move it. Kind of scale it and then grab the corresponding edges and slide it in. Awesome. Cool. And for this guy, what I'll do is I'll just say, uh, I'll use the planar try. Awesome. Oh. We need to join these. Great. Let's close curve. Looks good. Awesome. So the next kind of steps, what I need to do is actually give some things a little bit of thickness um, and in those pieces as well. So that we do have a command within, and this kind of brings me to the next one, which is in the uh, 
modifiers, which kind of live under each property. So what I'll do is for each one, I'll go through and add uh, some modifiers to it. But first, before that, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Awesome. So I'll select a part. I'll go into the properties panel. And then you'll see a new icon that there's kind of a wrench. I'm going to add a modifier. And I will select thicken. OK, I'm going to get out of this top view. Can I go back here? And you can see that it's kind of added a thickness to it. But the nice part is, is that it kind of stays a bit more parametric that you can change from you can go all the way up to two. If this is more of a kind of a cage or something lower. So we'll save out two for this one. And the other nice thing I can do is I can either I can copy the modifier, be able to select an object that I want to apply it to. It doesn't matter which mesh. And there we go. So now I have two of those actually selected which are done. The other piece, what I can do is just again, add a modifier of thicken. I'll say about like 0.25, maybe change this guy from two to one and add these as well. Copy modifier and I'll say There we go. Come back in. Let's set these lower. 0.25. And there we go. So everything kind of has a thickness, as well as my vamp. If I say show, we got this as well. Awesome. So once we kind of have these parts created, one the next kind of piece we'll get into the video is about wrapping things up. But before we leave here, I do want to talk about kind of uh, creating some UVs for the pieces. So what I'll do is I'll Call up the UV editor. So I'll use the right click. And then as I select a part, you can see uh, usually that there is no texture. So then I can just hit unwrap. We're getting this unwrap. The other thing I can use is more of a targeted kind of uh, transferring of UVs. So if I unwrap this one, I get this kind of UV of the the mesh. I'll say apply. And then the next what I can do is use the other command called the UV transfer. So B UV transfer. So I'll click this will be the vamp will be my source. And then what I'll do is I'll select these other meshes as recipients of said source. And this will, we have a couple options. We can go topology based. This is more like transferring this. You also have ray casting and distance, but we'll leave it on distance and say, okay. So that when I go back to that UV editor, I'll now see that some of these pieces are actually in the place. And if we're getting some weird uh, 
kind of things, then I can say, I, I can run that one more time and do more of a raycast. Okay, let me try this. This will be my source. This will be my target. Raycast, okay. Pull up the UV editor. And if you ever do get this kind of other deformation, we can just say live, live unwrap. And it's not necessarily gonna move it all the way out of position, but it'll just kind of uh, update it and relax. And I can hit apply. And again, if this occurs with multiple objects, I can say, oop, not that one but this one, awesome. There we go. And the reason why we wanna do that is because then if I have all of these parts and I'm gonna give it a material select the meshes, go to properties, I'm gonna use a new material, and I'm gonna give it a checkerboard. Looks good, switch over to render. And what's nice now is that it's it's perfectly placed with inside of the UV. So uh, there's no reason, uh, what we can do, this will we'll later look at this, is for being able to get more of a thermal plastic effect where we're bleeding some of that normal map through. And we'll get into that those kind of fun things in the next one.